This is the video lecture on international transactions. Now every country in the world actually has its own currency and many countries use unique currencies that are not found anywhere else. And this actually leads to some potential accounting problems because many times we will have businesses in different countries that would like to conduct business with each other. Perhaps we want to sell or purchase from these businesses and that can lead to problems. And the problem comes from the fact that there's always an exchange rate between the two currencies. So if you're going to travel, for example, from the United States to Europe, you would have to take dollars and convert those dollars into euros so that they could be spent in many of the European countries. And then when you come back to America, you would have to take your euros and convert those into dollars to spend the money in America. Well, the exchange rate between the two currencies changes from time to time. It fluctuates. And because of that fluctuation, it can sometimes lead to accounting problems. So that's what we're going to take a look at in this particular lecture. We're going to see how we could be affected potentially by these fluctuations. So this first example, this is going to be an international sale. So on December the 16th, we are going to sell merchandise to a British company. And notice this. It's $1,000, but it's not $1,000. It's 1,000 GBP, Great Britain Pounds. That's a different currency. And it says the exchange rate on that day is $1.80. So it takes $1.80 just to get one British pound. So I have to record that sale and I have to also convert the currency. And something else that concerns me as well is the date. This occurred on December 16th. That's awfully close to the end of the year. So that chances are we're probably going to have to do some type of end of the year adjustment. So to record this sale, as far as the journal entry titles, that part of it is pretty easy. We know exactly at this point how to, how to conduct a credit sale. We debit accounts receivable and credit sales. The question is the amount. It's a thousand pounds, but it takes a dollar and eighty cents to get every single pound. And we're an American company. Our financial statements have to be recorded in dollars. So it would actually take eighteen thousand dollars to get a thousand British pounds. So we're going to book this at eighteen hundred dollars. Now it's December the 31st. It's the end of the year. They haven't paid us yet, but because it's the end of the year, we have to record an adjustment. As of right now, the exchange rate has fluctuated from $1.80 to $1.83. So as a result, we're going to have to record a journal entry. Now the difference here is a difference of three cents on the dollar and over the course of a thousand pounds, that works out to about a $30 difference. So we'll do a $30 journal entry. We will debit accounts receivable to increase the amount that they owe us. And over on the credit side, we will have a foreign exchange gain. Now, why is this foreign exchange gain on the credit side? Well, remember, losses are always a debit. Gains are always a credit. That's always the pattern that you see. So now in the new year, on February the 12th, the company is finally going to receive payment. Problem here is, as of that day, the exchange rate has changed again. This time it has changed to $1.75. So as a result, when the company finally pays me, I get a thousand pounds I convert it into cash, it's only worth $1,750. And yet, between the first two entries, I've already booked $1,830 on this receivable. So that difference between the two of $80 is a foreign exchange loss. And like I said before, losses always end up on the debit side. So this is a good illustration of how these foreign currencies can affect us 
especially when the currency exchange rates fluctuate. Now, not only does this affect us on sales, it also potentially affects us when it comes to purchases. So in this example, we've decided to actually purchase merchandise from a British company. In this case, it's 500 pounds. On the day of the purchase, the exchange rate is $1.81. So $1.81 times 500, that means it's going to cost us $905. So this is a purchase of merchandise. I will debit merchandise inventory and I will credit accounts payable for 905. Now it's been 15 days later. Now we're going to finally pay for this. Now luckily for us, the exchange rate has changed a little bit. The exchange rate is now $1.78. So as a result, when I pay for this, it's only going to cost me $890. Whereas when I recorded the account payable, I recorded it at $905. So that difference of $15 is a foreign exchange gain. So the main thing to remember is that the exchange rate on these foreign currencies, it does affect me on both sales and purchases. And it could affect me in different ways. But the key is... If it's a loss, it will be on the debit side. If it's a gain, it will be on the credit side. And as long as you remember that, you can't go wrong on these international transactions.